Hey guys, how you doing? This is Ghana's number one blogger live. And we're back talking about the Champions League group stages. Yesterday, me, Ghana's number one blogger, and El Selector were basically breaking down group A all the way down to group F, or sorry, group D. We were talking about uh, some nail biting games what was going to transpire, and now today we're just going to break down what's left of the brackets from Group A all the way down to Group H. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you guys enjoyed the fun filled friendlies from Germany, Spain, Ghana, Nigeria, you name it. Unfortunately, I believe USA did not start this weekend, nor did Canada. But, you know, Neymar and the Brazilian squad definitely did start and they did their thing. Um, I'm just going to wait for my special guest host by the name of El Selector. And, you know, we're going to basically break down the groups. The first group we're definitely going to break down is Group E, which is comprised of Chelsea. Kranzdor, FC, Renz, and Sevilla. So, guys, it's 11.36 in the evening. Don't touch that dial. And, you know, we will come back soon with the wrap-up of the UEFA Champions League. Um, Just for our listeners out there, I think we should definitely play the Champions League anthem. And just to let you guys know, I do not own any of the rights to the song. Give me a second here. I'm going to just put it up on the prompter, and then we can definitely go from there. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the official anthem for the Champions League. I always get goosebumps when I hear that. It's just like, yes, it's always that time of Champions League being on and popping. Guys, just to let you know, this is Ghana's number one blogger live. 
like, comment, subscribe, tell your auntie, tell your brother, tell your sister, even tell somebody that you don't even talk to. Tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, Ghana's number one blogger live is full in effect. And we don't just talk about soccer here. We talk about all kinds of stuff. So you know what? When you definitely get a chance, make sure, you know, you tune in and, you know, you enjoy the GHN01 blogger experience. I'm just currently waiting for uh, my guest host here, El Selector. Um, we're supposed to start in a bit. Just uh, waiting for him, seeing where, you know, we could possibly um, link up, match up, and, you know, go from there and give you the all the necessary information. Let me say something right here. Do, 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 do. Okay, guys, I just played you two different versions, basically the same version of the Champions League ballad. Um, I don't think our special guest host will be here today, but you know what? Um, the show must carry on. Let us get into the group stuff right now, as you know, I promised you. Today I said that I would get into group A, all the way down to group H. And without further ado, we shall start. Let me just get you in range with group E. I'm gonna add to stream right now. Okay, let's go. Right now in group E, we have FC Kransdor of Russia. 
We have the famous Chelsea FC of England. We have Sevilla FC, who are currently the Europa League champions of last year. And we have Rennes FC, also known as Stade Rena. They are also a French squad. When I look at Group E, I see that there is a mixture of styles. Um, a lot of people may consider this as the weakest group in Champions League. As you can see, Kranzdor, Russian side, they don't really have much experience at the Champions League level. You have Stad Rens, that is a up and coming team. They're more the team within French Ligue 1 that, you know, is like a mid table team. And we have, you know, Sevilla, the ever winning um, Europa League champions. Usually with this side, as in Sevilla FC, they win champion, they win Europa League, and then the year after they come to Champions League, they somehow get bounced out, and then they're back in Europa League, and then they win it again. I believe right now at this point they've probably won between four to six Europa Leagues. Um, the way I look at this group, I would say Chelsea will finish in first. I believe. I'm going to go with Sevilla for second. Stad Ren will finish third. And FC Kranzdor, I expect them to finish in last. Um, notable players on every team. Let us go through the, the roster. First roster up is Stad Ren. Let us see their squad. They have a young squad. Looking up a lot of these names, one name that actually stands out to me is Steven Nzonzi. He's actually a French international that recently won the World Cup with the young dynamic Alele Le Bleu national team. Um, other notable names, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Doku. Is another notable name. He plays for Belgium. Only 18 years old. He's definitely a young whippersnapper that can definitely, you know, tear up defenses. He's also a forward. And there's also the young midfielder by the name of Eduardo Camavinga, who just recently got a call up to the French national team. And I believe he scored on his debut. So definitely watch out for Eduardo Camavinga in the midfield. The next team up is FC Kranzdor. FC Kranzdor is a team based in Russia. Their form as of late is they have two wins, a loss, and two wins. Um, let us look at their squad. Let's look at their statistics and see how they fare as a squad. They have actually four goalkeepers listed, and their starting goalkeeper is Sanovov, who has played two games and conceded two goals so far. Um, this team actually came to the qualifying rounds, and that's how they qualified for um, the Champions League group stages. They weren't an automatic qualification like the other teams because the way Champions League is said is that I believe you you have to occupy the first two slots within your league. So let's just say you got to finish as a champion or finish second place within your respective league, and that will give you an automatic entry into the Champions League. I'm looking through the roster there is not any names that actually strike me. From what I remember, a couple of years ago, there was a guy that played for the Ghana national team, under 20, great prospect, did well with the Ghana national team by the name of Rabi Mohammed. He played here for a few years. He, you know, unfortunately, injuries plagued his career. So, you know, he's become a journeyman.
basically, so to speak. Um, the next team that we are looking at is Chelsea FC. Chelsea basically went on a spending spree this year. I believe they spent like 180 million just players alone. Let's actually look at their squad because I remember they bought Hakim Zayic from FC Ajax. They also picked up a goalkeeper in Eduardo Mendy from Stad Red simply because um, they're having a goalkeeping issue with Kepa Ariza Balaga. Um, other notable signings this year is Ben Chiwell. They've also picked up from a, another EPL team. Um, another player that has been picked up within this transfer window is Timo Werner that they picked up from um, RP Leipzig. And they've picked up one more player, I believe, by the name of, where is this guy? Um, yes, a defender by the name of Thiago Silva from PSG, also known as Paris Saint-Germain. He came over on free transfer to definitely strengthen the back four of the Chelsea setup. Definitely a guy to watch on this squad is Reese James. He's a young whippersnapper. Just got his first national team call up to the three Lions, also known as also known as England. Um, another kid to also look out for is the American Wonder Boy, Christian Pulisic. He's definitely going to be grinding in the midfield. And um he was signed, I believe, last year at the transfer deadline coming into the season when starting he didn't do so well but when we went through the corona patch and they came back he was literally scoring from end to end and yes the prediction is chelsea is definitely going to finish first in this group and look for sevilla to finish in second start third fc crowns the third oh yes and i just seen a sighting El Selector. Let me just bring him into the group right now. Hey, El Selector, how you doing, man? We actually just had to start the show. What's going you. on? What's going on? We yeah, just what's going on, El Selector? What's going on, yo? Yeah, I see you guys started, bro. You guys are talking about Chelsea and predicting Chelsea may come up on top. We'll see how that mm -hmm. transpires. I beg to differ, but we'll see how that transpires. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea does have the uh, the, the American uh, stud, the young American stud. So we'll see how that transpires. Um, it's a tough division. I do see Sevilla coming out on top, and mm -hmm. I think Renes will come out on top. Uh, the 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 squad from, from uh, for those who don't know, currently they're first in the the uh, league one, and I think I think this is going to be their coming out party. They're going to show what they're. This is their showcase right here. They're going to show why everybody, and show the world why they are the team to beat. You know what I mean? And why they are, you know, the squad that people are going to be checking for most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So I beg to differ, but we'll see what transpires though. Yes. Mm. Hold up one second. Though. I'm gonna. Be, I'm just gonna. I'll be. I'm just gonna. I'm. I'm in here, but I'm just. I'm just gonna step off for a second, huh? Okay. Hold up. All right. Hold up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. As you heard, L Selector is gonna step out for a bit, so we're definitely gonna move on to Group F. And within Group F, we have Borussia Dortmund. From Germany, FC Zenit of Russia, Club Bruges of Belgium, and Lazio of the Italian city A. Ah. Um, when I look at uh, teams like Borussia Dortmund, again, they have some bright, young, talented whippersnappers. Um, definitely one that's on my list that I believe they just recently acquired is um the i believe he plays for norway and i believe his name is 
Hagland of some sorts. Let's just look at the roster and see um, where it's going with that. El Selector is just trying back in again. Yeah, Welcome back. back, in, back in. Yes, back in, back in, back in. So, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yep. So I'm, with you, I'm with you. All right. Here we go. This is the 20-year-old Norway and Dortmund striker that, as they say, has the world at his feet. Um, let me just read a few posts that's going on. Hagelin has scored 10 Champions League goals. That was last season. After hitting his first international hat trick for Norway. And the question is, how will he perform within the 2021 season for Borussia Dortmund and also at the UEFA Champions League, uh, UEFA Champions League level? Do you care to chime in on this player? Uh, this player, this player, uh, I think honestly, for Dortmund, I saw Dortmund play PSG last season. Mm -hmm. uh, they did okay against PSG. They're going to be playing Lazio in their first game. I think personally, I think Dortmund's going to do okay in this division. I think they will most likely make it through. Mm -hmm. I think they'll make it through. I think they should be okay. I think he'll do well against Lazio. This is going to be a this is going to be a, a relatively it's going to be very competitive for Dortmund because they do have the likes of Lazio and Zenit in this division, and mm. they have also um, Club Brug. You see, what I'm saying mm -hmm. so. It's going to be. I think they'll he'll do okay. I think they'll definitely make it to the round of 16, and I think he'll do okay in this division. I think he'll show up. It's. Mm -hmm. I think this is more of a showcase division for them, but they they don't want to. You know what I mean? get caught lacking like they'll say in the streets you know because mm -hmm. these teams out here are coming for blood you know what i'm saying teams like lazio mm -hmm. and, and club brook coming for blood so i think the, i think they'll do okay and i think this this player right here i think he'll be i think he'll have his coming out party i think mm -hmm. he's gonna definitely perform let me just read off some uh current stats mm -hmm. he's made seven appearances yeah. for his country and he has scored six times. In UEFA club competitions, in 14 appearances, he scored 14 goals. So basically, that's a goal every game. Damn. And domestic top division, in 73 appearances, he's has scored 48 goals. Mm -hmm. So this kid is a real deal. Like He's not backing down anytime soon. Like You can tell he's enjoying his football right now. Yeah, definitely a stud. Uh, definitely gonna produce. Uh, he's playing. He's playing very high level. Let me tell you something. The Bundesliga is not no joke league. It's one of the top. I would say. I could say we can make that case. Maybe the top three leagues in the world. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he's definitely showing out and balling out right now. Borussia Dortmund always, always comes in and always plays in the Champions League, and I think he's gonna definitely do well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move on to FC Zenit of Russia. Um, in terms of their form in the last couple of games, a win, two straight losses, a win and a loss. So what you can definitely say is them coming in, they're pretty much even. Um, the question is, are they really going to challenge in this? Um, are they going to challenge within this group? Then again, you never know until you see them play. Um, just looking at the mm -hmm. roster here, um, looking at any notable names, any um, guys that definitely, oh, I see a Malcolm sighting. Malcolm is a very familiar player. From what I remember is this is another team that loves to rely on bringing in a lot of Brazilian stars to actually help push them over the line and make them competitive, not just in Russian League, but also within Champions League. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, next thing, let's switch to the third team within this group, which is the Belgium team of uh, Club Bruges. Mm -hmm. Check them out. That is, look at the squad, see what the squad is saying. Um, let's see, Clinton Mata. 
Um, not seeing any notable names on this side, but what I definitely see with them is that they're a young squad, up and coming talents. And funny enough, on Club Bruges, they have the former Liverpool goalkeeper in the name of Simon Mignolet. So right there, that tells you that these guys are definitely competitive because he's come from a competitive environment, being coached by uh, Jurgen Klopp. Mm. Interesting. Um, any comments on Club Bruges before we head to Lazio? Uh, uh, this is a team that have played in Europa. I believe they also have partaken in the Champions League in the past. It's a team not to take lightly, you know. Um, they definitely are coming for blood. Where do they stand in the standings currently? In in their, um, in their league, right? FC yeah. Zenit. Let mm. me just uh, get that up. Uh, and As now. of right now, they're second in the Belgian league. Oh, Club Bruges? Yeah, they're second in the Belgian league. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're Who's second first? currently in the Belgian league. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this is a team that's definitely. Uh, the first team is, is uh, give me one sec. Let me check it out. It's actually uh, some team we've never heard of. It's Char Charlerio or Char I can't pronounce it. I don't want to botch the name, but yeah, yeah, that's the first team right now. But Club, Club Bruges is second, so they're creeping up. Okay. They, they have 19 points. Okay, definitely a team to watch out for. The next team that we're looking at mm. is Italian Serie A side Lazio. And the notable notable players on this squad, actually, that I've seen is Pepe Rinha. Again, another Liverpool connection. He played for Liverpool ages ago, and he's also a Spain international. He's an ageless wonder. I believe right now he's probably within his 30s. Actually, yeah, he's 38 right now. And he's kind of been a journey man of sorts himself. Um, mm -hmm. Another notable player within the squad is um, Chiro Immobile. That guy is actually an Italian international. He is very dangerous with his feet. Only 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Um in football, that's definitely considered um, being in the prime of your career. He's definitely a he's definitely a guy that you know. If you have him on your squad, you can definitely trust him. Let's look at even uh, statistics for club and country, and even um, competitions. Have you heard of Immobile yourself, by any chance? Yeah, decent player, a pretty decent player, uh, to say the least. Uh, pretty decent player, I must say. Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, yo, bro. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Pick up the phone. Yeah. Hello. Bro. Yeah. You, yeah, bro. You're gonna have to cut the stream. You're lagging too much, bro. I can't even make out what you're saying. Yeah, it's lagging like crazy, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. gonna have to restart. <laughs> Yeah, cut the stream and just we're gonna have to rotate it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's 